performance hats. That's what these supposedly are. Is that a thing? We'll find out in this video right here. Hey, it's Kurt. Welcome to my channel where I review fitness products and do a cost analysis on them and then give them a rating from my own rating system to see if they are worth purchasing or not. I buy all my products with my own money for unbiased reviews, although sometimes I am given some products for free. If that's the case, I will always let you know at the beginning of the video. So I don't know about you guys, but I am into working out with hats like these guys. They seem to absorb the sweat around my brow. And if I wake up early in the morning, I've got bed head and I'm going to the gym. I don't want to look ridiculous. I will throw one of these guys on. I'm always looking for a new and better hat. The only problem is after about two years of absorbing sweat and kind of getting bent out of shape, I end up throwing these guys away in the recycle bin and then buying some more. Now I'm wondering, is there a better way? Maybe there's sports hats that don't look so bad after a couple of years. I pay about $25 to $35 for these hats. So maybe there's a hat I can pay the same amount for or a little more that'll last me four years and they'll look nicer over time and not get kind of this uh, sweaty stuff going on here, which I'm sure you all are aware of if you work out in your hats. Well, there's a hat manufacturer called Melon and they have what are called performance hats. And I really wanted to check these out to see what they were all about. Now I bought three different types of Melon hats and this is kind of like my first impressions video of the hats because I've only had them for one week, but it is long enough to kind of give me a first impression and see what I like and don't like about the product right now. If I do get enough views on this video, I'll go ahead and do a six month review. I had a lot of questions about melon hats because I've only heard about them and seen them online. So I'm hoping some of the questions that I had were some questions you guys might have. So let's get started. First, who founded Melon? Brian McDonald and Corey Roth were a couple of college buddies who were passionate about sports and hats, and they both had a shared desire to build a company that inspired others. Melon was created right here in Southern California. They spent four years learning how to build, improve, and elevate the ball caps they loved. Finally, in 2013, they were ready to show what they had created. Where did Melon get its name? The name Melon is derived from the word milliner, which is a historical term for a bespoke hat maker. Why are people so bananas for this brand? I don't know, but if you meet anybody who's wearing a Melon hat and you ask them if they like their hat, be prepared for a very long one-sided conversation. Usually the person is enthusiastic, passionate, and describes how amazing these hats are and will go on and on and on. And sometimes you kind of have to stop them. It kind of reminds me of fanboys for iPhones and Teslas, whereas Everything is great about the product, nothing is wrong. How dare you if you say anything bad about it? So you'll do a lot of listening is all I can tell you. Do they have a store or is everything online? They started a flagship store in 2022 in Laguna Beach, California. Now let me tell you one thing, it's very busy. One day I went there on a Saturday about 10.30 just to grab these hats so I could test them. It was crawling with mostly guys in there trying tons of different hats on, running out and showing their girlfriends or wives and their wives on their cell phones kind of saying, uh-huh, that was great, honey. That looks great. And guys being indecisive about which one they want to buy. Should they buy this? Should they buy that? And I understand why hats start at $69 a piece. And if you're used to paying 25 bucks for a hat, that's a lot of money. So usually people buy one of these hats and they want to make sure that they're buying the right one. I actually had to get out of the store and wait for about 30 minutes for it to clear out a little bit. And then I ran in and quickly asked the girl at the front, what are your three most popular hats? The girl at the store was great. She knew everything about every hat. So I bought two of the top sellers and one that looked very much like the original hat they made. If you look online, almost every hat they produce gets between four and a half and five stars. And that's pretty amazing because there's a lot of reviews of the hats on there. Now, what kind of hats do you normally buy? Normally, I buy hats that are about 60 to 65% polyester and 30 to 40% cotton. And the liners seem to be mostly made of cotton. And when you sweat, it just kind of absorbs everything so it doesn't run down your face. They do, as I've spoken before, get trash really easy. But like I said, I end up tossing them after about two years. And they're not easy to clean because when you take the sweat off the front of the hat, usually the sweat ends up showing up just a little the next day when it dries. So getting back to the first hat I bought, this is the Trenches Icon Hydro. 
This is a special limited edition color, but what was really cool about this color is they didn't charge extra for it. This was $69, and if I would have gotten a regular color, it would have been $69 as well. On the tab, the color is called Desert Nights. This is a flat build hat that consists of two panels, and the front crown is made of 88% polyester, 12% spandex. The back side of the crown is mesh and made of 88% polyester and 12% spandex as well. The top side of the visor is made of the same material as the crown, but the bottom part is 100% polyester. And the lining inside the hat is 100% polyester as well. Some people love flat build hats. I don't, I think I look dorky in them. Also, flat build hats have to be fastened looser than my normal hats, which is unfortunate because if I make it tighter, it usually puts a mark in the middle of my forehead. So I had to work the bill just a little bit just to make it curve just slightly so it was more comfortable. Otherwise you make it super loose and you get tons of space right here. Out of the three hats, this was the hardest to get feeling most comfortable. Like most, if not all of their hydro hats, they all float, which is great. You're maybe at the beach, you lose your hat, it falls in the ocean, or you're fishing and you lose your hat and it falls overboard. It's all good. You can just turn the boat around and grab it. I've also seen people paddle surf with melon hats on too. I'm guessing the hydro is signified by this little insignia here on the right hand side of the front panel. Another couple neat features I like about the hat is if you turn it over and look on the inside, this is called the buck rum. They have this kind of neat print in there. It's kind of fun to have those kind of things in there just kind of styles it up a little bit. Also on the buckram, there is a pocket in here where you can stash some money if you need to. And I actually really like this small little melon logo. They didn't go overboard with it. On the bottom of the hat, you'll find this button. And I didn't know what this was for a long time until I saw a guy's video and they said, basically, this is for putting the hat on. So when you put the hat on, your thumb usually hits right here. So when you usually adjust the hat, you'll do this as well. So it's basically made to keep wear and tear under the visor at a minimum. What other types of hats did you get? The girl who was helping me at the store was extremely knowledgeable and she pointed me to the two top selling hats. One is called the A-Game Hydro, which looks a lot like a baseball cap. Here it is right here with a front right and left panel. On the tag from the hat, it said the color was ash and amber. This was a limited edition color as well. But again, $69, the same as the regular colors. I really appreciate them keeping the limited editions price the same as the regular hat price because most companies, when they have a limited product, bump the price 10 to 15%. What drew me to this hat was this little, I want to call it orange, but they're calling this infrared logo on the left front panel. The other hat the girl pointed out to me that was one of their top sellers was this Odyssey Stacked Hydro, which is Melon's take on the trucker hat. And you can see why. On the tag, this was called Evening Fog. All of these hats had this mesh lining in the back. They had the button on the bottom and they all had the hydro insignia here. How long did you test them for? I only had these hats for a week, so I only tested them for a week. But every day I would wear at least two of the hats to see how they felt. So it was a good enough time to get a first impression of all the hats. What hat did you gravitate towards? I gotta say, I really gravitated towards this A-game Hydro. And the reason why is it looks like a baseball cap. It was the most comfortable of the, all of them first to put on, and it really started molding to my head quickly. I only had to work the bill in a little bit because it comes a little bit rounded anyways. So it's definitely comfortable, and after a week, it feels great. This I would use for working out in or going for runs in. My second favorite hat or the second one I kind of gravitated to was this trucker hat, the Odyssey Stacked Hydro. I like this too because it was easier to form to my head earlier. Now it's feeling great. It was the second hardest to get feeling good on my head. The more I wear it, the more I like it. I'd probably would use this hat if I was doing long walks. I don't know why, but it seemed just a little more delicate than this hat. This one was not my favorite. I wore this the least just because the comfort factor is not there, although it feels way better than it did a week ago. But I'd probably use this if I was hanging out at the beach and I wanted to block the sun because it's got the flat bill. I wouldn't do any sports in this thing because I think it would just fly off because I have to keep it looser just to 
not put a mark in my forehead. All in all though, they got better after about a week of wear. A lot of people say, when you first put these hats on, they're amazing. I didn't feel that way. And I have to say, I am used to wearing cotton hats and cotton hats right away, you can make them feel great. Are they easy to clean when they're dirty? Mine have not gotten dirty yet, but I did watch a few videos on people who had the melon hats for like two or three years. And they basically took dishwashing soap and a little brush and brushed out the sweat from the hat and it disappeared. And I've seen them dunk hats in water and take them out and dry them and they still look great. I'm afraid to do that yet. But if I get enough views, I will do a long-term video where I dunk these suckers and I will show you what they look like. Were there any weird things about the hats? Well, yes, some weird things. I like to work out in my hats, and I did notice that the A-game, my favorite hat, was not great working out in. It did fall off my head, and I think that's because of the polyester lining here. It doesn't grip as well as a cotton hat does. I'm hoping over time this will grip better, but I remember just like doing some push-ups and just bloop, fell right off. When I do the same with a cotton hat, it doesn't do that. Okay, scratch that. This hat would fall off my head when I first tried it. I think maybe because it was brand new and it wasn't fitting as well, but after a week, it's not falling off my head. So now that my melon hats are staying on when I'm working out, especially this A-game Hydro, will I become a fanboy? Another thing I noticed as I was doing a hit workout and I was sweating a lot, and because the lining up here is polyester, it actually didn't absorb the sweat and the sweat just ran down my face. So I was constantly taking my hat off and wiping my face. With the cotton hats, I don't find that happening to me. The cotton just kind of absorbs the sweat and keeps it in the head. Now, I'm not sure about the melon hats long-term. Maybe they start absorbing better long-term. We'll see. All right, let's get to the pros and cons of these hats. First, the pros. They're nice looking, they're made with premium materials, the hats float, and they offer a limited edition special colors every once in a while. Now the cons. The sweat wicking actually doesn't absorb sweat and just sends it down the side of your face. So on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being best, what would I give them? I'd give them a seven out of 10. Now it might go up, it might go down later on, but the hats are really nice. They're, they're really well made. They're not cheap or chintzy. They are expensive, but hey, if you're gonna keep it for four years, 69 bucks might be worth it. Here they are once again, just for you to check out. Okay, I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit that like button, and of course, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of all my videos when they come out. They come out on Saturdays and Tuesdays, by the way. And if you have any questions about these hats, feel free to comment down below and I will answer all of your questions or as many of your questions as I can, the best that I can. And finally, you can always hit me up on Instagram at Kurt. FitFi, where I post at least one or two times a week on everything fitness, or sometimes just some nice photos. I'll see you in the next one.